y'all. Brian's ghetto suitcase. I'm Abby, this is Ryan, and you are watching Lost Among Locals. Today, we're moving. We have been here in Plovdiv for like a month, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, like yeah. a month. Yeah, a month in this cutie patootie apartment. It's been absolutely wonderful. We got lots of work done uh -huh. and finally made some money. And so yeah, but today we are moving to Sofia, which is the capital of Bulgaria. So we're heading west and we're super excited. We have another nice apartment there. Not quite as nice as this one, no, but we think it's gonna be good. But I think it's gonna be good. It's in the center of the city, yep. close to everything, so yeah. Yep. So here we go. guys welcome to Sofia capital of Bulgaria Sofia is amazing we've yes. been here for a little while but today we are going on a free walking tour any idea how old Sofia is as a city it's not a test so you could just you know pick a random number and shout it at me like five years or ten <laughs> <laughs> you know 1200 12 country, okay, it's in the thousands, so it's a good start, but it's more than that. 25. Okay, we keep going, it's, it's more than that. No, actually, you know, it might take a while, so I'll just take it. <laughs> Around 6,000 is the answer that I was looking for, and that would technically make Sofia one of the oldest um, European capital cities. This statue is a complete and total mistake. So how come? <laughs> Our city is actually named after a church called Hagia Sophia that we are going to see um, towards the end of this tour and not after this woman. So apparently it turns out that whoever was in charge of the city at the time did not know where the city got its name from. And when they put this statue here, they started receiving a lot of angry letters by local people saying, how can you not know the history of the city and da 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 And they also had two other major points and that's because if you take a look at the statue, you will notice that Saint Sophia is represented with a crown and an owl on her head. And those are pagan, non-Christian symbols, so it doesn't really work well with the fact that she's a Christian saint. And also, other people like to criticize the statue for looking a little bit too sensual, maybe, and kind of, you know, wearing a dress that's a bit too um, provocative to be a Christian saint, I don't know. But the Bulgarian Orthodox Church was also not very happy about it, but hey, as you can see, she's still here. So she kind of became one of the new symbols of our city and I guess that's one of the reasons why even a lot of local people believe that the city got its name from this lady, which is not true, so there you go. You <laughs> now know more than the people living here. <laughs> Mainly ruins of houses of people, mostly from the fourth century. What's important here is that underneath the modern day center of Sofia lies the ancient city of Serdica. And once again, instead of having an old town where buildings are from the same period of time, in the same architectural style. At the moment, we are standing among the 4th century level ruins. We just came from the 15th century church. I'm now taking us to the mosque at the other end of the ruins from the 16th century. I say the mosque because it is the only functioning mosque that we have in Sofia right now. And you might be wondering how come, after being part of the Ottoman Empire for so long, it's the only mosque that we have. And truth is, in the late 19th century, after the establishment of the third Bulgarian state, we had more than 30 mosques within the city. So where did they all go? And how come we have only this one left? At the time, a big portion of the Bulgarian Muslim community left the city. They went back to the territories of the Ottoman Empire. And a lot of these mosques were abandoned. And some of them were later turned back to churches because originally most of them were churches. Others started to be used for buildings with a different purpose. And that's how we have on this one left. Ooh, I better catch up. Right, that here is like salt or whatever, but that's there's a million people here every single day filling up like 
car loads of yeah. water, so. Yeah, it's good. It's just warm. So this is one of the, or the only, I think, Russian Orthodox church in Sofia. And he was saying even though it's the same branch of Eastern Orthodox religion, that the architecture and stuff on the Russian churches is always very different. They always have the onion domes and a lot of gold gilding, and they're just very, they're a little bit more elaborate and tend to have more spires instead of domes, and um, you can kind of see the difference for sure. But when I speak about royal heritage, there is no way that I don't acknowledge these yellow bricks. <laughs> the yellow brick roads of Sofia. They're not leading to us, as far as I know. But what I can tell you about them is that they really are one of the main symbols of our city because they came here at the very beginning of the 20th century. And at the time, a lot of people thought that they were a wedding gift from the Austrian-Hungarian Empire to one of our kings. It's fake news. It's a made-up story in order not to make the people angry. Because truth is, that same king, he just wanted to bring something that would make the central part of the city look unique. And he thought that these yellow bricks are a good idea. So he took a huge loan from Germany to buy them. They were really expensive. And when they came here, they turned out to be quite impractical. Because when they get wet, they get extremely slippery and believe me, I can share many stories with you. Car drivers said they're a nightmare for car driving. Girls with high heels complain about them all the time, but they did become one of the main symbols of our city. Uh, and we don't have any more of them left. They're now even protected by law and cultural heritage. And urban legend says that one of the bricks is actually made out of pure gold. So I'm giving you a task right now. From now to the end of the tour, be careful what you're stepping at. And if somebody <laughs> manages to find the golden brick, what you should do is take it. Bring it back to me. Now, although if that was true, it was probably stolen a long time ago. You can still try. You never know with these things. So we'll to Constantinople or today's Istanbul. Uh, it was like a Roman highway that was passing through the Balkans diagonally, connecting Belgrade with Constantinople, passing through Sofia and Plovdiv. That's the second biggest city in Bulgaria, which if any of you are considering going there, you should. It's a very nice town. This right here is the oldest building in Sofia, one of the oldest in the world, in fact, with the preserved rooftop. The actual construction of the building is the same. It has never been destroyed, mysteriously unscathed during the World War II air raids, when most of the surrounding area was completely wiped out. Um, known as the Round Church, or Rotonda of St. George, and it's a unique church, because inside you could observe five different layers of frescoes, paintings, from five completely different periods of Bulgarian history, including the original 4th century layer from the time when it was built. The whole area around the church was the favorite place of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, the emperor that brought Christianity to the Roman Empire, and he really loved Serdica or Sofia because of the mineral waters. He treated it as his own spa resort. Also, his mother was born here, so he had a, like a special connection to the city. And that's why we like to quote him very much, because apparently he used to say, Serdica is my Rome, and we keep repeating that to this very day. And at some point, they even say that he wanted to move the capital of the Roman Empire to here. But of course, his advisors told him that Constantinople is a much better idea. And I totally agree with that, but um, I still love to tell the story, okay? but it was the biggest landmark that was close to the city. So usually, whenever people went to Serdica, that's the first thing that they would see while they would approach, because naturally it's on a hilltop, um, none of the surrounding buildings existed at the time, and it was really, really visible, and people would often say, oh, here is Sofia, here is Sofia, meaning the church. We now must be approaching the city, that's what they would say. And after a while, they started referring to the actual city like that, and around the 14th century, it became official, and we've been calling it like that ever since. 
So Hagia Sophia, translated from the Greek, it's a Greek expression that means holy wisdom or God's wisdom. So Sophia means wisdom. I don't know how wise we are, but that's what it means. And once again, it has nothing to do with the woman saying Sophia and her statue that we all love. Uh, actually, an interesting little detail about this building is the fact that it doesn't have a bell tower. It's just a different style. And after a while, they wanted to put a bell somewhere so that they can ring it. And I want to show it to you because they got really creative with it. Because it is right up there. <laughs> I must say, I don't think they're using it. I think they're using the bells of the other one. Saint Alexander Nevsky was the patron saint of the Russian Emperor Alexander II that led the Russian armies towards these lands in the late 19th century to fight the Ottomans, which resulted in the establishment of the third Bulgarian state. So basically this church was built as a sort of a thank you towards the Russian Empire, but also of course as a symbol of the newly established Bulgarian state at the time. It took them more than 30 years to build it. It was extremely expensive, more than half of the money for the building of the cathedral were gathered through donations by the entire Bulgarian population and the best quality materials were imported from all over the world like onyx from Brazil, marble from Italy, the bells of the bell tower from Moscow and they really compensated big time for the missing bell in the other church because here the heaviest bell weighs 12 tons, the smallest one is only 10 kilos uh, and they actually say that if all the bells of the bell tower ring at the same time, all the windows of the surrounding buildings will break down. So as far as I know, they've never tried it. Uh, this is real gold, by the way, in case you're wondering, about 8 kilograms of gold were used for the covering of the dome. All right, you guys, so we are standing outside of the biggest cathedral in Bulgaria, and we're gonna go in and take a look because those domes are real gold, and I can only imagine what the inside looks like. I'm sure it's fabulous. All right, you guys, so that free walking tour was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, our guide was, he was funny and yeah. knowledgeable, and I don't, I mean, like I said, all the sites were really cool. Yeah, so it's called Free Sofia Walking Tour. They do tours in Plovdiv and also tours in Sofia. Highly, highly recommend them. They are always free. They actually have, and it is called this, we did not name it this, it is called the Communist Tour, which they're doing later this afternoon, which explores the communist history of Sofia and Bulgaria in general. They also do a Jewish tour, which explores the history of the Jews and talks a lot about World War II and what happened here during that time period and how Bulgaria was able to save all of the Jews in their country um, and did not deport them to what they knew was happening. Yes. So it's a really cool story that you'll get to hear on that tour. And then they also do a pub crawl or a bar crawl in the evening. And the bar crawl, I believe, has a cost. I yeah. think so to some of the other tours. Some of the ones but I think the walking tour is free and also the food tour. Yeah, the, the food tour, the walking tour is all free. But I think you said the commonest one was like 20 lev or something mm -hmm. like that. And I think that's the same with the pub crawl. It was 30. It was like 30 lev. Mm -hmm. So some of them do cost a little bit, some of the special ones. Yep. But most of them, there's several that are free. And you should definitely take them. They are very knowledgeable. It wasn't just like a tidbit of information. It was a lot. And it was so good to like figure out what these buildings are that we've been looking at for two weeks. So yeah. highly, highly recommend them. They're awesome. We don't know what we're gonna no. do now, so get lost. Okay.